Hi, I'm Natalie of So Hungry Hippie, and today's tutorial was a request. I'm doing a cork easy wrist pouch. So I'm going to use my templates, and I'm going to use, I have this scrap piece of cork that had a defect in it, so I'm going to use this for the tutorial. And I guess, do we need a lining? I guess we'll do the lining. That's part of the pattern. Yeah, you should go. Yeah, we'll the do the lining. We are trying to be really fast because we're both hungry. <laughs> Saturday night. <laughs> I, I, I took a, a piece of a that apple. You took some of my cheese box. Yes. All right. Um, that, that should hold me up for the next 10 minutes. Yeah, we'll, we'll be good. We'll, we'll have this out lickety split. I'm going to use my taupe zippers. I will be... Oh, I'll take off the poles so that you can watch me put it on with the zipper jig again. I'll be sewing on my Juki TL2000, and I just have on the regular foot tonight. I don't think I'll need the Teflon foot. So I'm going to do this from start to finish, cutting the pieces. I am not going to interface because the cork that we sell in the shop has a micro suede backing and there is plenty of body with it. And I just want you to see it can work without interfacing. However, you can absolutely use any interfacing you want to and it'll work great. Okay. All right, let's get into it. I'm going to grab my templates. All right. I'm going to go overhead to cut these out. There's the strap piece. I hope I remember how to do this. This is my own pattern. <laughs> it's been a hot minute since I've made it though. Okay, exterior, this is the lining. This is the foam piece, but I'm not gonna be using foam today. These are... Are you gonna remove the... I'm not gonna remove the thing. I don't have time for that tonight, Ramel. I'm sorry. <laughs> so we're gonna do, let's see how we can fit this. One and then I'll turn it sideways for this one. Yeah, I think we should zoom out, yep. So typically what I do when I'm using a template is I use chalk to mark it. However, I really want this to show up on camera for you. So I'm gonna use a pen or a marker. Let's try this Sharpie. Why? I can cut it from this side as well. It might be easier to see. So sometimes I will use my rotary cutter, but you do risk chipping your blade if you're gonna use this to just cut out. So I'm gonna do it the proper way. I don't always do it this way, but we're not gonna talk about that. Dun, 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 dun. So now I know right where I need to cut. Let's see about the wrist strap. Is that gonna fit? It'll fit down here. See how I'm utilizing those straight edges? So you only have to do one cut and second cut. The three and four are already cut for me. And then for the D-ring connectors, I'm, I need two of these, so I'm gonna turn it this way. And can you see my markings okay? I'm going to lay this one right up against that line. So again, I only have two cuts. That is typically what I'm going to do. Unless I'm in a mega hurry, then I might use my rotary cutter right against the template. But again, you risk damaging your blade and the template if you cut with it. Just saying. At least I've done that. So there's one body piece. Main body exterior. There's two. There's two D-ring holders. And almost done. So this is left over for scraps and I'm just gonna set that to the side in case I need it for anything, we shall see. 
So there's the strap, two exteriors. Now I'm going to cut the lining with, or the interior, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to use this Ruby Star print. And I'm just gonna cut both pieces at the same time. So I have this half yard piece and it is folded in half. I'm gonna make sure it's really flat. And I'm gonna cut two pieces at once. This one I'm gonna move up from the edge because, can you zoom out a little bit? Cause I don't know that this edge is straight or not. So I'm just gonna move out from it. Now, really, I should turn the fabric inside out, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I'm just gonna do my markings and then cut the rectangle. I don't include the selvage of the fabric because the selvage will break down more easily. And again, on this example, I'm not gonna use interfacing. Usually, I would probably at least use SF 101 on the, the, on the lining pieces. But if you don't have that around, I want you to see that it will work without the SF 101. It will work. So we've got two lining pieces. Now I'm gonna just move this out of my way. I'm gonna get my zipper ready. I like to have everything sort of just ready to grab so I can get the construction done all at one time. I am gonna use the zipper jig. We have these, they're purple now. You can't buy the blue ones anymore. Who knows why? But I'm gonna take you to this side view camera. Let's see, let me move the machine a little bit. And we'll put this guy right here. Can you see that? And I take a longer piece than I, tip, I typically need in my pattern. This is way longer. But it's because when I feed this through the back channels on that zipper pull, it doesn't always go in perfectly even. So I want room to cut this to the right size in case the teeth are not perfectly aligned. See, so on this, this right one is just like an eighth of an inch too high. But that doesn't matter because I'm gonna trim it. So let's go overhead. You know how I do my patterns. My zippers are always an inch less wide. So let's, let's start there. That will be my There we go. So now my zipper is the exact correct length. Now you know what I do need are my little zipper tabs. You can do two by twos or you can do two by threes. It doesn't really matter. Just something to encase those raw edges. I'm gonna throw that out. Sometimes I like to just cut from the scraps, two inch strips of fabric, and I keep them in a little drawer. And then when I need zipper tabs, I have a plethora of different colors to choose from. So there we are. Okay, now I forgot to turn on my iron. I'm gonna try to do this just with finger pressing. Hopefully it works. We're gonna slip that zipper in. Here we go. Just like always, we're gonna sew down that edge. Let me move my machine back into place. And you know what? If you need to use clips to hold this in place while you're sewing, please do. You can use whatever you want. Let me see what I've got here just handy. I had to really clean up my tool area because we had the shop open today. I'm gonna get out my double sticky tape for the zipper. I don't see my clips. Oh, there they are, they're hiding. 
under my tomato pin cushion. So I'll show you what this looks like. And, huh? Yeah, I do, yeah. Tell me when it's a good view. All right, so here I've got my clip holding this in place. And I'm gonna start, I like to have my zipper tabs a little bit longer than the tape because then I know that I can trim them down and everything is caught, everything will look good. My stitch length needs to be turned down a smidge. But there, that works. So we're gonna do that same thing to the other side. And then I'll trim them both at the same time. So fold it in half, make a crease, then bring your edges in to meet the crease. Fold it again. This is easier if you press it with an iron. <laughs> It'll hold, but Ramel's pressuring me to go fast. No. I'm joking. Hmm. Maybe my <laughs> stomach. Your stomach is pressuring me? Yeah. Okay. Here we are. Now we're going to sew that down. Ramel, I hope I remember how to sew this. I don't think you'll forget. That's like muscle memory. <laughs> After 525,600 zipper pouches. I'm not sure I remember the exact size of the boxed corners, though. Oh, that's okay. It's always good to reference that anyways. You can look up the pattern if you want. It's called the Easy Wrist... Easy Zipper Wrist? I don't even know the name of my own pattern. It's in my documents, project pattern folder. Easy wrist pouch, that's what it's called. I had to look at my own templates. Ooh, ooh. Okay, so we've got, no, easy wrist pouch. So if you open the PDF, then you can instruct me so that I'm doing this actually correctly. I probably did the wrist strap first, did I? You have to scroll down, hon. Okay, let me help you. Okay, we're all good. The zipper is ready to go, but before we get into that, let's complete the strap because it's nice to just have things done. We can do the strap and the D-ring pieces at the same time. It's the same mechanism, pretty or the same technique, pretty much. So, I am doing mine out of cork. Now, I'm gonna fold it in half to make a crease. Oh God, sorry. I have to breathe. <laughs> Just not in the microphone. Okay. Why well, it sounds like I'm like meatloaf or something. Well, it sounds like you're you're out in the sea sewing. Out in the sea? Yeah. Oh, that's kind of romantic. Mm. I wonder if people can sew on a boat. I don't know. That or if would it's be, too swayy. That that would maybe calm waters, but yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is the thing about this. We're only gonna sew from about here to here right now. We wanna keep these open so that we can sew the short ends together first. Trust me on this, don't skip this. Don't skip this, don't, don't, skip, 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 don't. Skip this. Okay, if you were doing something else, you probably looked over by now to see what the heck is happening. Here we go. That's we an attention getter. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to turn up my stitch length to about three and a half, and I'm gonna just start sewing this open edge closed. But I'm not going to go all the way, remember. OK. 
Okay. This is really important. I only sewed from here. Why is that? To here. You'll see in a minute. We're going to fix it in a minute. Oh, you say trust you. Yeah, that's yep. what you said. Yeah. Yep. I was trust listening. the process. I was listening. Let's do the other side so we have a balanced look. You don't have to do this part yet, but I like to do it just so I don't forget. Although in a minute, we're going to have to do it again. But Okay, so right now, this is how it is. You can see how it's going to look. But we have to open this up and bring this one up, right sides together. Open this up. And we're going to sew down. The short edge. We're going to sew all the way across. Okay, here we go. Shoulders in the way, move your little shoulder. All right, here we go. Sometimes that can be a little finicky. It's okay, just take your time. Might have to adjust it. Just get her done. There we are. It's closed. And now look at this magical process. Boom. It's going to be inside. And look. Oh, guess what I forgot to do? What? what? I forgot to put on my lobster clasp, Ramel. Oh, my God. What a rookie move. It's so okay. It's fixable. Everything in life is fixable. So you're going to have to cut it? Except baking cookies with a quarter cup of salt. You did Don't that? ask me how I know. <sighs> this is not a tres leches moment, is it? <laughs> one time in band camp, <laughs> one time I cooked Ramel a tres leches cake. Can you imagine? And we lived in San Antonio. Imagine, it's like 95 degrees in February, and I left it out on the counter for a few days. And he came over, oh, here's more cake, can I have it? Sure, go ahead. Didn't think anything of it. He's like, huh, tastes like alcohol. I was like, huh, I don't think I put any alcohol in it. It was fermenting. And ever since then, he thinks I'm trying to kill him. Yep. <laughs> okay, I cut apart the short ends because I did a big boo-boo. But I'm not mad at myself, no. Because we don't do that up in here. We don't get mad at ourselves for dumb things like that. We're going to slide on the lobster clasp first. And then we're going to sew those short ends together. Yay, it's all fixable. You know I'm not going to cut any of this on the video, right? It's oh, you're stay. not? No, it's going to stay. <laughs> Don't... Th Ooh, I almost fell. Don't threaten me like that. No, I'm not threatening you. I think uh, everybody should know that it's okay to make, make Well, that's, that's a good point, Ramel. That's a good teachable moment. You like that? Yeah. Let's try this again. Here we go. Everybody messes up. Here we go. Now, look at the magical process. Now we're back in business. We fold that back over. See our little lobster clasp on there now? Whew, that was close. And now I'm going to just finish. First, I'm going to do the open edge and close it and join my previous stitching. And then I'll do the other side. You do have to kind of stop and start because you have to, it's, it's a loop now. So just give yourself a moment, line up your needle, take a breath, be prepared. If you need to trim down your seam allowance at that join, go ahead. I don't have to, this juki will sew through my finger if I let it. But here we go. She better perform now that I've put the pressure on. You know, I probably should have put a hump jump behind there. See that? Hear her working? I'm only going to go up this far. Cut. 
and begin again. Okay. Then you'll have a bunch of strings to clip and trim. Oh my gosh, I almost cut my cork. I almost cut my cork. Sounds like a saying or something. Okay, I'm just gonna move ahead. So then usually what I do is right at that thicker portion where we did the little join, I, I push that together and then ideally, if you have the tools, put a rivet through here. And then the lobster is secured in place at all time and you have a nice wrist strap. If you don't have a rivet press, you can sew through this as long as you have a, a heavy duty machine. If you don't, this is, I mean, you know what I mean, a machine with a good motor. If you don't, you have to do like a workaround because the cork is a little bit thicker. And the workaround is just cutting a piece of cork or the whatever you used here, and you're gonna glue it and then wrap it around, trim away the excess, and glue it. So this is what it ends up looking like. Can you zoom in? It's a little hard to see with the cork on cork. You see what I did there? So if you don't have a rivet machine, See how here's my seam, that's the thicker part. The lobster clasp is here. I would glue this down, and then I'd wrap this around and glue that down. And then you have a nice wrist strap. Okay, here we are, there we are. So there's that. Now we need to place our D-rings. So I used gold for my lobster. So I have a couple of, I have a cup, I have some extra uh, rectangle rings. So you can use D rings or you can use rectangle rings. Both do the same thing. We're going to do it exactly the same where you bring it into the middle. Oh. So I'll fold it in half, make a crease. You don't have to do it this way. You can always do it any which way you want. You could do it this way, but for the cork, because it's thicker, I tend to just do kind of a little cheat. I'll do edge, edge. This will be hard to hold in place for me at the moment. And then I do it like this. That's my little cheat. Want me to show you that with tape so I don't have to hold it so weird? So I'm gonna put some double sticky tape up here. This is a workaround if you're using vinyl or cork. Usually I think people are using fabric for this portion. So this is kind of one of those little tricks you teach yourself after years of using thicker fabrics to make it easier. I'm gonna peel those away. See, now it holds. Now it holds, this doesn't have to be exact here. Then I just need to make sure when I fold it over, it's going to fit my, my um, D-ring. So this one, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna peel it up and make it a little bit, fold it over a little bit more, cause I want room. There we go. See, I just make sure that it's gonna fit. <laughs> I am struggling tonight. <laughs> that one a little bit more. Take the time to measure it here before you sew this down. What you don't want is having like lumps and bumps because that just doesn't look very professional. 
There you go. See, I got there in the end. That's how I want it to look. So now what I'm gonna do is sew down the open edge and then sew down this edge so it has an even balanced look. And I think I will increase my stitch length or keep it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go to three and a half for this one. If you don't wanna take it out, just go across. We cut that off anyways, doesn't matter. Okay, so there's one. I can trim off the edge there. So now we've got that done. So I'm gonna put it through the rectangle ring or the D ring. Now here, again, you can do a rivet if you want, or you can sew it. Just know the thicker your fabrics, you've now got a couple of layers to go through. There it is. Now the tendency is you wanna go slow, but did you know actually your machine works better for you and has more power if you do thicker areas like that quickly? But you know, to each their own. All right, let's put in our zipper. You know the drill with this. Double stick tape. I don't put it on the zipper tabs, notice that. I'll put this one down for now, but I'm not gonna peel this side off yet. I'm not ready to do this one yet. Okay. Well, I'm going to do it for a left hand. Center your zipper. And make that flush. And we're going to sew that down. Now you might want to switch to a zipper foot. I'm gonna stop here because I do not have my zipper foot on and I'm gonna move that pull out of the way. And it's on. Now I'm gonna take one of my linings and I'm gonna place it right sides together, sandwiching that zipper. If you need to use clips, please do to hold it in place. And we're gonna sew down that top edge. I can feel that pull, so I'm gonna lift my foot and move the pull behind. Put the foot back down, readjust, and keep sewing. Now let's do the other side. We're gonna peel this off. Place it right sides down on this, uh, on this one. Centering it, you want space on each side of the zipper. Now, if you're really fancy and you've been doing this a while, you could place the lining face down, right side lining to lining at the same time. I do this often now because I've made this so many times. You don't have to do this. 
but it saves one step because you're doing two steps at once. But you will have to use clips then, okay? My pull is way up here, so I'm not, I don't have to stop yet. Now I'm getting close, so I'm gonna lift my foot, my needle is still down, and I'm gonna move the pull out of the way. Now if you have a zipper foot on, you won't have to do that. All right. Now these are on. Give it a press. Make sure that you're pressing your fabric away from your zipper. Your lining should be a little shorter, so don't worry about that. See this side, the cork, I need to press it away from the zipper. That micro suede backing wants to grab the fabric and it can mess up. That's why a lot of times having SF-101 on this is a really good idea. It makes it a little bit easier to work with and your cork won't grab it as hard as it does the fabric. You want to make sure you take the time to do this pressing. For both sides, make sure both sides are pressed away. You can use your iron. Now I'm going to top stitch. Where can you use your iron? Right here. I would be using, using my iron right here on this side. But you don't have to. That's why I love these kind of projects because if you just need to speed it up and you don't have time for all that, you don't necessarily have to do it, especially if you've made quite a few. I don't recommend skipping steps, but when you get experienced, you know what you can skip and what you can't. So I know I can skip the ironing on this project, but I wouldn't skip it on others. I'm gonna turn my stitch length up. It's going to be about three and a half. I like a three and a half to a four on the top stitching for this part. So let's change the camera. I'm looking at my needle. There it is. Love it. Let's do the other side. I check it real quick, make sure it's good. That gets, those, those edges get sewn again, so I don't even worry about back stitching. You can, it's a habit thing. You can if you want. There we are, there's the second side. Okay, let's cut our corners. We're gonna do inch and a half corners. Now, if you have a template, use it. These, um, sometimes this is harder to do on camera because I have these screws down here. Let's see how this, no, it's gonna hit. Just gonna. Okay. I usually like to make my corners with an acrylic ruler, not this kind of ruler, but an acrylic ruler. But I don't have it handy at the moment. I like my little small one. So I'm gonna draw. Oh, that's terrible. I'm gonna draw my squares to cut out. And then I'm gonna use this cork piece as my template. I cut the lining and 
this at the same time because it's not going to be as big here for the lining. So now I can place this here and I can clip it in place and I have the instant exact same size corner. Now you can also measure this out. You don't have to do it this way. I am sharing with you some things that I do sometimes. I think I've said it before, but I used to production so so I had to be fast. Or I made less money. So we needed to pay our heating bill, right, Ramel? Yeah. <laughs> that that pumpkin patch really helped us a lot. I could make things to sell and I put them at the pumpkin patch and that paid our bill all year for or half a year for heating in England when we lived there. So these little quirky things that I do, it's what works for me to speed up. But you definitely don't have to do what anyone else does. You can find your own way. And you are right. If it works for you, you're right. All right, I'm just going to trim some threads here because otherwise they'll drive me a little crazy. We are almost there. We're almost done. Now I'm going to open the zipper. This is the most important part <laughs> that you cannot skip. Please open your zipper. Next, I'm going to take, I'm going to separate the lining. And I'm going to put the cork pieces right sides together and line them up at the bottom. And then I'm going to do the same for the lining. I line them up down here at the bottom first. And for the lining, because it's cotton, I prefer to use pins. This is a personal preference. It's what works best for me. If you like the clips, you can use the clips. Oh, I didn't put in my D-rings. Ramel! I didn't know which step was that. I know. I I'm just blaming you because you're sitting there. It's oh. okay. We're going to sew this in to this side. It's, it's about, you don't want to forget this because this is what will your strap will connect to. So we need to get this one in. We only need one. Here we go. Let me place it Didn't about. Didn't you make two of them? Don't talk about that. What? Oh, okay. No. That was going to be for both sides, maybe. No. Don't, don't talk about it. We only talk about. Sorry? We only talk about um, books, space, and food. I don't okay, know. so you want me to talk about space right now? <laughs> it's always a good topic. So anyways, you guys, I am going to, I'm going to put this about an inch down from the top. That's what works for me. And I typically put it right in the seam allowance where I had sewn it together. You can, if you want to, rivet this in if it's easier for you. You can absolutely do that. For those of you who might be cussing me out because this is too thick, do it out of fabric. All right, there's nothing wrong with that. And in fact, I'm going to show you it's absolutely fine. You might want to interface your fabric to make it a little stronger. That's the only thing that I will say it can be not quite as strong as the cork. So either interface it or use lots and lots of layers. But I'll show you this works too. This is going to be for me, so I'm just going to do it like this real quick. It'll be great. 
let's just roll with it and experiment and see what happens, right? Name of the game. Oh, I gotta turn my stitch length way back down. I go over this a couple of times. And then I'm gonna trim away the excess. I don't trim too much, like cutting it in because I want this to be really strong. All right, now we're back to business here. All right, let's put clips here so we can be sure we're doing this right. The micro suede does like to pick up threads, as you can tell. It's okay, doesn't bother me. Let's, uh, let's sew the bottom first on the exterior. Yeah, I'm just gonna do that. Let's sew the, usually I will start at the lining because we don't sew the entire lining bottom together. Yeah, let's start there. Cause that's what I say to do in the pattern. Here we go. We're gonna sew this together now. I'm gonna start at the lining bottom, about in the middle. We're not gonna sew the whole bottom of the lining together. You wanna do this bottom and this back and forth a few times because we're gonna box those corners together and they will wanna pull out unless you do some back stitching there. So please back stitch. Now we're sewing up here. We are not sewing over the zipper tab. See that? Can you get in there any closer? It, it's kind of a bright light. Let me shut off the machine. So this, This I am sewing right by the zipper tab. I am not sewing over the zipper tab. Here's the tab. I'm sewing right by it. There will be no holes. There will be no gaps. And my corner will not be pinched. All right, let me turn my machine back on. You can zoom back out. We're coming up to this down, this area here, backstitch this. Now we're gonna turn it and we're gonna backstitch this. Backstitch. Now we're gonna Backstitch this part too. Here we are coming up. We're going right over that D ring area again. You wanna make sure your hardware is to the left. You're not sewing your hardware. You're just sewing right over where you attached it. And then here, we're coming up to that zipper tab again. I'm going right beside it. See this? Here's the tab. I'm going right beside it. Now for my lining, I'm gonna veer in a little bit so I have a little bit bigger seam allowance. Just a smidge. Back stitch. And then this corner down here, you're gonna back stitch. And you're not gonna sew all the way across. You need to leave this open for turning. I'm gonna take the pins out now. Put the pins in my pin cushion so I don't stab myself by accident. Okay, now we are going to do the boxed corners. So we pull them apart. Make them flat, nest the seams. Same with this one, you just kind of pull it apart. You're matching those seams. See that? One goes one way, one goes the other. Mm -hmm. 
So here's how it, here's how it looks. You kind of pull it apart, match the seams. One goes one way, one goes the other. It doesn't matter which way, you choose. Now let's do it for the lining. I kind of go like this. Match those seams. Oh. I like, again, I like to put a pin in the fabric. Yeah, I'm old fashioned. Same thing down here. I'm gonna match the seams. Went a little wonky down there, but I don't care. It's in the innards. It's gonna be tucked away. Nobody will see that. And now it's easier to look at on this one. Now we just sew straight across. You can flip it this way if you want, straight across. You know, don't get too bent out of shape about seam allowance. As long as you're consistent and you're using the same throughout, you're gonna be fine on this. Don't let nitpicky things stop you. It's going to turn out, you'll see. Experiment with that. Do seam allowance of a quarter inch on one, do half inch on the other. You're gonna be fine. Yeah, I do. I think I forgot to on this edge, so I'm gonna go back over it. There we go. Now I'm gonna do the lining. Yeah, back stitch. I mean, yeah, it's important because you don't want those stitches to come out. Here we are on this one. I can tell I haven't sewn in a while because I'm a little bit on the struggle bus tonight. That's okay, it happens to everyone. Now we've got that hole in the bottom of the lining. So we're gonna flip this thing right sides out. And we're almost done. I love this part. Now, here is a very important piece. Your zipper tabs, you have to come in and push them out with your thumb. If you just go, oh, that's it. Well, that's, that's not gonna look good. You have to come in with your fingers and you have to, see how this is looking right now? No bueno. You have to come in with your finger and push that baby out. There it is. Now it's looking sharp. Corners, I always push out all my corners. I'm gonna tuck in my lining. I'm gonna close this lining, bring it on over, back stitch. You can hand close that if you so desire. I do not desire that. I'm gonna trim my threads. And now I push the lining back down in there. I would take my mini iron and press this from the inside one more time. One more time. Here's my wrist strap. There it is. And there is your cork easy wrist pouch. Now remember, this is a project 
that you can do time and time again. And each time might end up a little bit different. And that's okay because you know what? The name of the game is learning. So you're gonna find what is your best way to make it or your best technique or your best materials. And I would let, say that makes it a little unique. So no, no one is the same in, in the same aspect. Sure. Yeah, mix it up. Do a, do a contrast bottom. Throw a zipper pocket in if you want to practice zipper pockets. Put a slip-in pocket in. Do whatever you want. Sky's the limit. But this is a nice basic pouch to make. I should have, I didn't do my rivet yet, which I'm gonna. Uh, especially for craft shows, for craft fairs or holiday events that you might be doing. You can use my pattern. You can use it. It's okay. You don't have to ask. I would sell this for at least $20, maybe more. What would you sell it for, Ramel? Uh, 15, 20. I mean, it doesn't take long, especially if you get used to making them. And it's kind of like that thing that might bring people into your booth and then they'll pick up other things. I have a lot of thoughts on craft shows. And I think what we're gonna do is a Zoom call for those of you that are interested. I've done a lot of in-person shows, a lot of shows. And I have tips that can help you. So if you're interested, leave a comment and we'll set up some kind of Zoom call. I know that's not this tutorial, but I wanted to put that out there. If you make one, please share it. Please uh, put it in the makers group on Facebook or tag me on socials and I, I will do my best to comment and support you, okay? Thank you so much for being here. If you have any questions, please ask. I will be answering comments or you can email us, help at SoHungryHippie.com. Do you want to put that up? Thank you, Ramel. Thanks to Ramel for staying late and helping me film. And I will see you all soon. Peace, love, sewing.